you turn your Bibles and go with me tonight to the book of 2 Kings, working through the great characters of the Bible, and you can't help when you do this to spend a little time in the life of Elisha. And uh, we're working our way through this passage of Scripture and just asking the Lord to speak to our hearts. There's a wonderful story here. The setting is this. Uh, Syria is one of the enemies of Israel at this time, and uh, there is a type of terror-like warfare that's going on in the area. What happens is it's not like a full-scale war waged between two nations, but there are little terrorist battles that are happening, and Syria makes their plans. And we come to this passage of Scripture, and the story is great to read, and it shows us the power of God and the blessing of God and the fact that we can trust in the Lord. And I want to read it to you and take some time to see this story from God's Word. Second Kings chapter 6 We'll begin reading in verse number 8, 2 Kings chapter 6, and verse number 8. The Bible says, Then the king of Syria warred against Israel, and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king. But Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early... And gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass when they were coming to Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw. And behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive? With thy sword and with thy bow, set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away. And they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. Now we read the story, and I want to tell you the story also. There's so many wonderful truths here. There's something that jumps off the page at me and is encouraging to me. The Bible says in verse number 16, He answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. I like the idea and the fact that God is bigger than our enemies. Elisha looks at his servant who's scared because they've they're in camped about and they're compassed about by the warring enemies, the Syrians. And, God, and Elisha just speaks with great calm and resolve. He says, don't worry about that, fear not. He says, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And I want to preach this message tonight. They that be with us 
are more. They that be with us are more. Folks, I want you to know, you and God, irregardless to the size of the enemy, is always a majority. We always have more than the enemy when it's even just us and God. And by the way, you're never alone. The Lord Jesus has promised all of us who put our faith and trust in Christ as our Savior that he will never leave us nor forsake us. They that be with us are more. We don't have to fear. We can rest in the fact that God is with us. We come to the story, and I love it. And we have this uh, difficult time. Syria, no doubt, is a group. There's a group of folks, this Syria, this group in Syria, and the king of Syria is the kind of guy who's leading little marauding groups to torment and torture God's people. And so the story goes like this, that the king of Syria was war against Israel, and he counseled together. So you can see he's got his upper room with his generals and his cabinet, and they meet together and they counsel together, and they decide where they're going to go, this place or this place, in such a place or such a place. That's where we're going to encamp, and that's where we're going to maraud and terrorize the nation of Israel. And we understand that he finds a problem. The Bible says in verse 9 that the man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. Now the message, God speaks to Elisha and says, Look, here's what the Syrians are planning. Elisha calls the king of Israel and sends a message to the king of Israel. And so the king of Israel is prepared for this marauding group and it always looks like Israel is a step ahead of Syria. But it's because Elisha knows what's going on. So here's the bird in verse 10. The king of Israel, he sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him and there was an of and saved him there not once nor twice. It says, look, this happened more than three times. Not once, not twice, at least three times it happened that the nation of Israel foiled the Syrian plan. Now the heart of the king was troubled. You can imagine the heart of the king of Syria wondering how in the world is Israel knowing what we're going to do every time we do it before we do it. And so immediately he starts looking at his cabinet. He says, one of you is a spy. One of you is spying on me. One of you are causing me trouble. He says, which of us is for the king of Israel? With a troubled heart. The king speaks, and then one of his servants speaks up. He says, look, Lord, it's not the king. It's Elisha, the prophet. See verse number 12. But Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Now, this servant to the king of Assyria, he says, I don't know how he does it, but I am confident that Elisha, he knows what you're saying in the bedroom. He knows what's going on. And so... The king of Syria sends spies to find out where Elisha is, and they find him in Dothan. Then he sends, verse 14, Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. You see this great host compassing the little city of Dothan about, the place where Elisha is residing. In the middle of the night, Elisha is fast asleep, the servant rises up early in the morning, verse 15. And he says, Behold, there's a host that has come past the city, both with horses and chariots. He gets up and what does he see? He gets to the place where he gets, he's fetching the water and doing his chore and he looks around and that great host of the Syrian army, these notorious terrorists, are come past the city about and he gets a little excited. You can see it in verse 15. He says, his servant said to him, Alas, my master. You see the exclamation point? I like the exclamation points in the scripture. You ought to pay attention to them. God's word's perfect. We see this. That you can listen and you can hear the tone of this guy's voice. It's almost like he's got this, uh, he's trying to be a man, but he's like, Alas, master. He gets this high-pitched, <gasps> scared tone and he's shaking his boots. He says, How shall we do? How are we going to deal with this? Man, this is awful. How are we going to deal with this? And that's when Elisha looks at him and says, Hey, look, 
fear not. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. My spirit, being the cynic that I am, I am, and uh, you probably are too. Someone tells me, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. I'm thinking, prove it, buddy. Because all I could see was a host of bad news Syrians. So the Bible says, verse 4, 7, that Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Elisha's prayer is, Lord, open the eyes of my servant that he can see what you're capable of and what you have provided for us. And the Bible says, verse 17, the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. What did this boy see? He saw a world that had not ever been visible to him before, but a world that's present even for us today. The fact that God has us encamped about, the fact that God is warring for us in ways we can never imagine. The Lord opens his eyes so that he can see the spirit realm. And the mountain was full of God's army. The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. This servant of the Lord gets a little taste of how big God really is. The story continues. Verse 18, when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. So what happens? This marauding group of Syrians come down to Elisha. And when they get into the presence of Elisha, Elisha's just prayed that the young man's eyes, the servant's eyes, would be opened. And now he prays that the marauding enemy's eyes would be shut. Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Can you imagine the chaos? Can you imagine being part of this marauding group when all of a sudden every person in the group can't see anything? You talk about vulnerable. So here's what happens. None of them can see because of the miracle that God had done at the request of Elisha. Verse 19, Elisha said to him, this is not the way, neither is this the city. He's playing a little trickery with him. He says, this is not the way, this is not the city. He says, follow me, I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. They They were seeking Elisha, they found him, and now they follow Elisha away from Dothan, and he led them to Samaria. What's Samaria? What's the significance of Samaria? It's the capital city of Israel at this time. He leads them to Samaria. And the Bible says, verse 20, that it came to pass when they were coming to Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And now all of a sudden they're in Samaria and they can see what's going on. They see where they are. And behold, they're in the midst of Samaria. Verse 21, the king of Israel. The king of Israel at this time was a low-down, good-for-nothing, dirty, rotten dog. The Bible says in verse 21, The king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, I hear him stuttering. Can you imagine? The king of Israel, he steps out of his palace or wherever he's living at the time, and here's the large marauding group of Syrians, eyes wide open in the middle of the capital, surrounded (laughs) And the king doesn't know what to do. So he looks at Elisha and says, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? I can see him excited. He's reaching for the bullet in his pocket, trying to figure out what he's going to do, you know. Shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? The Bible says that Elisha answered him, Thou shalt not smite them. Would you smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Would you, would you smite an enemy, somebody that you took captive? No, you don't smite them. He says, I'll tell you what you do. Set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. And he prepared great provision for them. So they have a big meal for this Syrian army. He had great provision for them in verse number 23. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away and they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. Guess what happens? God deals with the problem altogether. Who knows for how long the Syrians had been 
terrorizing the people of Israel with these little bursts of war. And God takes care of the problem altogether. And when I look at this story, I'm encouraged at the brilliance of my Creator. My eyes are open to some things that are true about God. And more than anything, my eyes are open to the fact that they that be with us are more than they that be with them. You know what my prayer is? God has never changed. God has never changed. And so my prayer is that my eyes would be open to who God really is. And that my eyes would be open to the attributes and the character of the God who loved me so much that he sent his own son to die on the cross that I could have everlasting life in his presence. I want my eyes to be open to the treasures that I have as a child of God. My prayer is to be reminded again that God is more. And Lord, open my eyes to how good you are. It's a long introduction to a short message, maybe. Point number one. Open our eyes. My prayer is that God would open our eyes to his understanding. My prayer is that God would open his eyes to his understanding. Now, the beginning of this story starts in the presence of the king of Syria. An evil guy who was making plots and plans to terrorize the nation of Israel. But he can't figure out why in the world is it that every time I make a plan, the Israelites beat me there. Surely there's a spy in our midst. His heart's troubled thinking there's a spy. He says, just tell me, who is it that's for the king of Israel? His heart's troubled. And someone speaks up, he says, "Uh uh-uh, that ain't it. That's not it at all. He says, it's not the king, it's Elisha the prophet. He says, I'll tell you about Elisha the prophet and his God. Elisha knows what you're saying in private. The message that I think that needs to be taken to our heart is the fact that God has a perfect understanding of all the circumstances and situations of life. It's easy to get to a spot and a place in our Christian life, especially when we get low or burdened, where we think, Man, this is terrible. I pray that when our heart is troubled over the conditions that we find ourselves in, that God, once again, would open our eyes to the fact that he has perfect understanding. And his ways are right and pure. His motive is love. And he can be trusted. I'm praying that the Lord will open my eyes afresh and anew To God's understanding. Number two, I'm praying that God will open our eyes to his resources. Can you imagine being this little servant of the Lord? This guy that's serving Elisha. And no doubt, he has every reason to be concerned. He says, Elias, master! Here it goes up at the end. (laughs) He says, they've come past us about. And he wasn't lying. I mean, it was true. They'd brought a whole host of bad news, Syrians. And the man of God prayed, Lord, open his eyes. God opened that servant's eyes. And you know what he noticed? He said, oh my, I'm not in this alone. He saw... God's army that far surpassed in number and might and ability, though unseen, far surpassed anything the Syrians could have ever possibly dreamed of dropping on the people of God. That servant looked around, can I, I can just see him. And all the mountain was full of the angels of God, dressed in battle array, prepared for the battle, prepared to stand up for Elisha and the work of God. And you know what? The chariots were on fire and the horses were mighty for battle. And what so encourages me that that same God makes his resources available to us. And I don't see it and sometimes I forget it. And there are times when my heart's troubled. I say, last master. But I'm praying that once again God would open my eyes 
to his un quenchable resources. You can never get to the bottom of it. You can never exhaust them. The resources that God has provided for his people. There's a psalm, Psalm 36. It says something like this. that The angels of the Lord are compassed about those that fear him. And it's just as real for us today as it was for Elisha serving that day. That God has his mighty power encompassing us I just pray once again that our eyes are open to God's resources what do you have that God can't provide what do you face that God can't orchestrate and overcome oh I'm reminded that they that are with us are more than they that be with them I'm praying that God will once again open our eyes to his resources and finally I'm praying that God will once again open our eyes to his plan. To his plan. Elisha's servant, I should back up. The king of Syria, he had a plan. It wasn't one that pleased the Lord. Elisha's servant, he didn't have a plan and he didn't know what in the world to do. And so he says, Elisha, master, what are we going to do? The king of Israel... uh, the, 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 the he had a kind of a plan, but if he'd followed through with his plan, he just made a big old mess and started a war. But God had a plan. God orchestrated the most unusual circumstances. A mountain full of angels and chariots of fire and a vision of what's going on in the bedchamber of the king of Syria. <laughs> God had a plan that worked perfectly together. All the pieces fitting and joining just right so that God could get the glory and God's people could have peace. And I'm praying that God will once again open my eyes to his plan. I don't understand the twists and turns of the path of life, nor do you. But I do know this, that God can be trusted. And his plan for your life and his plan for my life is perfect. And he does things that we can't even imagine. I love reading these stories again for the first time in a long time. Because I can't remember all the endings of them. I've read this on numerous occasions. And as I read through this story again, I thought, Lord, how are you going to take care of this? And you know what? I was surprised by God's creativity. And I was encouraged by God's great ability. And you know what? I'm, li- I'm a living Bible story. You are too. You're a child of God. Your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. He's working all things together for good in your life. And as you watch the story of your Christian experience unfold with its twists and turns and griefs and heartaches, I pray you'll let the Lord open your eyes again to the glory of his plan and the perfection of his care for us, his people. Oh, isn't it wonderful to know the Lord? I'm just reminded again that they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Let's pray. 